Okay, in this uh, section of the problem, we're going to actually find the, the work that is uh, that was put into creating this uh, charge distribution that we have here. And from that work, we can find the energy that's stored in it, and therefore that's also known as the electric the energy configuration, which is the whole point of the problem. And the way we're going to do that is we're, uh, we're going to use it to find, uh, uh, we're going to use the, the electric field we found in that first part of the video uh, to find the electric potential, and then use that electric potential to find the work right here. So I'm going to scroll down, uh, and, and this is exactly what I circled before. So here is the uh, expression to find the work using the electric potential and the charge uh, dis uh, density, which we found, and then the uh, electric field which we found above. And remember, the electric field is different in two regions. We have an electric field that exists outside of that sphere uh, that we had here, and that's equal to this right here. And then we have a different electric field once we breach into that sphere here. And that's what we have here. And since uh, um, this, this expression here for the electric potential is negative, when we do this integral for the electric potentials, because we have two potentials, one outside of the sphere and one inside of the sphere, uh, we're going to have to add them both together, uh, superimpose them on each other. So that's why we have this one, and that's why we have this one, because we're adding them together, and they're minus signs here because uh, the electric expression for electric potential is negative here. So this goes from, this is a line integral that goes from infinity all the way to the outside of that sphere, R, and we use the uh, dot product between the electric field here that's on the outside, and that's what you see here, dotted with a line that is perpendicular to the surface of the sphere which is uh, pointing in the r hat direction and then we have the same thing continuing from the uh, the surface of the sphere all the way to some point r inside the sphere and again i guess i could put a different r here uh, but i'm, I'm not going to change uh, what i already wrote so just know that this little r and these little r's are, are different little r's uh, so yeah and that's dotted of course uh, perpendicularly with the surface of the sphere so this is the electric field for uh, this section here so let's go ahead and start working on this we'll go ahead and drop down that um one half i'm leaving this inner roll this outside inner roll here uh in terms of uh definite in intervals because uh, it'll be uh, it's actually a definite interval but just to save time from uh, writing that over and over without actually taking any action on it uh, I'm just not going to go ahead and write that yet <clears throat> but one of the things actually before we do that uh, we can go ahead and pull out some of the constant terms here and to both of these uh, terms and that would be this k over 4 pi or 4 epsilon naught so k over 4 epsilon naught here go ahead and pull that out of everything from here all the way here and then um, we'll go ahead and do the integral. We'll leave it as an indefinite integral for now. Um, that leaves us with a, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this r fourth out of this term right here. This dot product uh, uh, turns into a multiplication. <clears throat> so now we have the integral from infinity to r of one over r squared. Uh, let's see here, um, dr minus uh, there's no fancy constants that get pulled out of that one. So now we just have uh, r to r, little r line integral of r squared dr. Both of these are relatively easy integrals. And these are, this is all to the d tau. So some uh, infinitesimal um, surface charge or uh, surface element. And so now uh, we can go ahead and combine these real quick. So we have a k over 8 uh, epsilon naught indefinite integral here. Let me scroll up a little bit uh, for my hand. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn these into brackets. We'll go ahead and evaluate these integrals. This whole thing turns into a uh, positive uh, r to the fourth over uh, little r for evaluated from, uh, let's see here, big r to infinity minus, and then we have an r to the third divided by three and that's evaluated from the little r to r. It's negative. And then we have our d tau sitting out here. So let's go ahead and uh, execute those uh, limits of integration. Uh, this doesn't change at all. We'll just leave this the same. Not there yet. And so our limits of integration, so we have an r. We'll go ahead and pull the r to the fourth out again. Um, so we have, um, let's see here one over r minus zero, so one over infinity is zero, minus a, um, let's see here, we'll pull out, we'll pull out the one third here, one third, uh, let's see here, r to the third minus 
big R to the third, and the bracket detail, as you can see, uh, we can go ahead and cancel out one of these R's here. That leaves us with, let's see, um, we'll just leave this constant here. Another indefinite integral. This is why I left as an indefinite integral for now because we just keep rewriting it over and over. I'll do a little trick. Um, I'm going to write it in orange here. We'll multiply by 1 times this uh, r to the third that was left over minus r third minus big r to the third just to get it under the same uh, denominator. There we go. Nothing really changes in this next step here on, for the constants. But at this point, we can go ahead and combine everything I just wrote into one term. So we have a 4r to the third minus little r to the third over 3. And then we have our detail. Now we can start looking at these, um, uh, this integral that we've been leaving on the outside. This detail is uh, it's just r squared. Sine. We're doing a spherical coordinates. So this is our standard spherical coordinates. Uh, um, differential, um, uh, differential element, <clears throat> and we're going to evaluate over the uh, entire span. So, uh, because there's no theta or phi in this integrand here, uh, that integral is just going to be uh, four pi. We've seen that before. You can take the integral from um, zero to or zero to two pi, and then um, uh, for the uh, phi and then the uh, 0 to pi for the theta with the sine theta sitting in there. That's what it ends up being. So it just ends up being 4 pi. You can go ahead and check that if you want. And then uh, let's see here. Leave that there. And then um, what's left is just the r integral. So 0 to r. We're going to integrate over the span over it. We had, uh, we had, oops, we had an r to the uh, squared here, so that will uh, change things a little bit. And remember that our, um, our, our, mm, our differential element right here, before I write that, our uh, charge density, sorry, was actually k over r defined by the problem, All right? And then everything else that's left over is, let's see here, we have a four r, whoops, four to the r to the third minus R, little r to the third. We did have a one third under here, but I'm going to go ahead and take that out and then multiply it by this eight, and we'll go ahead and turn that into a 24. So 24, let me scroll up, I'm getting pretty close to the bottom here. And this is all uh, dr now. <clears throat> so we can go ahead and change a couple things. So we have this four goes into this four here, and that just turns into a six. Let's rewrite this a little bit neater now. So uh, we have a 6, 6 epsilon naught. We can go ahead and take this k out, and so we have a k squared out here. k squared, 0 to r. And then what's left in this integrand now, oh, you know what? I forgot the r squared dr over here. We'll combine these two drs to make it to an r to the third. r to the third times a 4 big r to the third minus r squared, dr, all right, this is turning into a, uh, <laughs> a feasible integral now. Uh, we'll go ahead and split, distribute this r um, to the third in, so we have two different um, integrals here. Okay, so now what we have is the integral of 4 r to the third, little r to the third, minus r to the sixth dr okay and we'll go ahead and execute that integral and what we get from that and we'll just put it into a big bracket here so we'll have a four r to the third of r to the little or the little r to the fourth evaluated from r to the zero minus r to the seven over 7 from big R to 0. Okay. 
uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and cancel this four out with this four out. So we're not rewriting uh, too many terms as we go forward. So now we have, you know what? I totally, you might have caught me. Totally dropped that four, um, this pi. I'm going to go ahead and write it in orange so you guys see it. And so we have a k squared pi over 6 epsilon naught. So we have a bracket that we'll leave open here. And now we have an r to the third, big R to the fourth, now that we apply the limits, minus a big R to the seventh over seven. Let's get this under a common denominator. Um, so once we get that under a common denominator, this will be um, seven over seven, right? Seven over seven. And this is just uh, big R to the seven. So it's all common here. And we're almost there, everybody k squared pi over 6 epsilon naught. And what do we have here? And we have, we'll pull out the r to the 7th. And then uh, we have a 6 over 7 that's left over. We'll cancel this 6 over 7 out. And we're left with, um, you know what? I'm just going to jump to the next page. We're left with the answer for our energy configuration, also known as the energy stored in the system. Epsilon naught divided by 7. And that's it. And that it matches what we uh, were given in the question that we should go in for the answer. So the next step is finding work the other way and verifying that it's uh, the same as this.